So um, if I could ask these two guys to come up, uh, Tom and Bill. We also have a discipleship ministry. We have about 50 guys discipling 50 guys. They meet typically weekly around the city somewhere in coffee shops, and we've had about six, 16 sets of guys that have graduated from the program. Could anyone that has graduated or is currently in the program, could you please stand? Okay, thanks guys. I, I wanted you to see, maybe there was someone nearby and you wanted to talk to someone about it. You can also talk to me. I'm the one trying to match people up. And I'm looking for someone who says, I want to be discipled. I think I can learn something from another mature Christian man about their faith. And I'm, and I'm looking for men who say, I'd like to disciple someone. I, I've been through life. I've got some experiences. I'm willing to carve out some time from my schedule and meet one-on-one -on -one with another man and go through that. So if you're interested in that program, let me know. So here's Bill Mahalik. And Bill went through the program recently, and I just wanted him to share his experience with you. I was working with uh, Thomas, and it, again, it's a mutual feedback back and forth. I learned from him. I'm not just imparting all my wisdom to him. Anyway, it's a 12-week program. Uh, we learned about life and through the Bible together. Some of the lessons, one of them was uh, where does temptation come from? Another one was how can, what can hinder our prayers? And uh, another one is how to know God's will in your life. So good stuff, good stuff to learn. Also, it's again, I said, it's not one way. It's not just me telling everything I learned. He's, I'm learning from him. It's good stuff. Uh, great program to help us through the storms of life. Thank you. Thomas Ludlum. Awesome. So Thomas, at some point, must have approached me and said, I'd like to go through the program as well. What is it all about? Um, tell me about it. And I, I matched these two up. So Thomas, what was your experience with the discipleship program? So my first experience, uh, or the, the first thing, was um, getting to have a deeper friendship with Bill. I mean, you know, you're getting past the surface of, of the Bible and everything. Uh, the second thing was that it would uh, help me realign, no matter how good or bad my week was, it helped me, you know, how, on the how part. And that how part was, you know, getting closer to Jesus and following Jesus. Amen. Good. Thank you. Bill, do you have something for Thomas? Why, well, I sure do, Steve. <laughs> it's an ISI coin. <laughs> Here you go, buddy. All right. Thanks, guys. You know, there's... Thank you, guys. There's really a common theme in this program. that We have the material for you. There's no cost. But the friendship and the bond that's built, many men don't have a, a, a real good buddy, a deep buddy, someone that can share things with that maybe you don't even share with your, your kids or your spouse. And um, the other thing is you learn from each other. It's truly iron sharpening iron. Well, now I'm going to introduce our speaker, John. For 32 years, John worked in secular Christian radio. So one could truly say he has a face for radio. <laughs> now, I wouldn't say that, John, but I could see where someone could say that. But yeah, uh, he worked uh, in rescue ministries with the Louis Palau Evangelistic Association Development. And um, he's been involved in, in Bible studies. He's taught pastor, pastors during four short-term mission trips to India. And uh, the main thing he wanted to know and his, you to know in his introduction is he loves Jesus. And he's, he's here today to talk to you about that. So please welcome with me John Zweiger. Uh, as you can tell, I am a holy roller. All right, let me get uh, squared away, rounded away. Good. Uh, it is, as I look out at, at uh, you righteous gentlemen, it is definitely great to be here. And I'm going to get my phone out that will make sure to tell me if I'm running over time, along with the clock that's in the back there. So, uh, as, I'm, as I'm here this morning... Uh, I want to I want to ask you to to help me out on something, and that is with the sheet that hopefully most of you got when you came in. Can you hold that up with me for just a moment? 
Okay. Now, don't, don't put it down yet. What you're holding, you follow instructions very well. Thank you. Uh, what you're holding in your hand is a ministry tool. And this tool, first and foremost, is to minister to you. And then it's something that hopefully you will be using to minister to someone else. So, okay, you can put it back down. Now, now let me ask you, is there anyone here who did not get one of these? If you could raise your hand and some of Jesus' servants will come down and make sure that you get one. And if you could just keep your hand up until, uh, until you get that. Very good. Uh, I would like to take just a, a quick moment and thank uh, Salt Church in Surprise for printing all of these sheets up for us. Uh, printing is not cheap these days, so thank you, Pastor Michael, uh, for making that happen for us. Thank you. Let me ask you, and I'm guessing some people here are familiar with John Eldridge uh, and his book, Wild at Heart. Any, anyone here familiar with that book or, or read it? or uh, Well, there's a bunch of wild men here today. That's, that's good to see that. Uh, John is uh, really a, a, a top Christian writer. He's written a number of books. And one of the insightful books that he, he has written is, is on spiritual warfare. It's called Waking the Dead. Anyone ever read that or familiar with that? Uh, that is really a good book. And one of the things that he sees in that, and this is a main theme in the book, is that when we were born, we were born into a world at war. And, and this war has been going on since the very beginning of, of mankind up through this day to day. And we have a very powerful enemy who will do anything and everything that he can to destroy us. And he mainly does that through deception. One of the verses that really grabbed me concerning this deception, and Jesus is warning us here, he says, not everyone that calls him their Lord enters the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father. Well, how does that work? Well, we're going to be seeing in just a few minutes how that works. And he says, on that day, the day that every single one of you here will stand before the Lord, he says, on that day, many will say, well, Lord, didn't I do all these great things in your name? Didn't I come to ISI at 7 in, in the morning, and I'm an afternoon guy, Lord. So that was, that was pretty early for me. Didn't I do that? And, and he's going to, obviously, things that are deeper than that, but he's going to look at so many of these people, and they're expecting a well-done, good and faithful servant. And what they're going to be getting, because they were deceived, was Jesus saying, I don't even know you. My spirit wasn't in you. My, my Holy Spirit wasn't in you directing your life. Be gone from me, you evil one. Be gone from me, some translations say, you who practice lawlessness. In other words, you who practice a lifestyle that is not following my instruction. Well, Satan doesn't want us or any of those people that we care about to have the life that Jesus wants to give us in John 10.10. 10. He says, I came to give you life and life to the fullest. And he will do anything and everything that he can to make sure that we don't get that life. And, and you may say, well, well John, you know, I, I appreciate you saying that, but I'm good. You know, Jesus saved me and my loved ones were good. And it's good that you can say that, but the question is, when you're standing before the Lord, 
Will he say that? Will he say that? And, and so the thing about the deception that Satan uses is with deception, you don't know that you're being deceived. That guy that was calling Jesus his Lord did not know until it was too late that he had been deceived. And so what I'm here for today is to give you a tool so you can know from God's word, first of all, if you've been saved and if you're seeing this evidence in your life and then this is not a tool to keep to yourself this is a tool to share with others that you care about and when you care you do share well this is where we jump into the sheet that that you got and and what you see is when, when we look at Jesus as our Savior, he's our Savior because of three things. He saved us from something to something for something. He's taken us from something and saved us from that into something else that is this life. And if we are truly in that life, he saved us for something. And the for something is not to just wait till we get old and die so we can go to be with him in heaven. He saved us for a purpose, for a job description. And we're going to take a quick look at that as well. Well, in this sheet, there are six questions and six key verses. And you'll notice under each of those key verses, our smaller support verses in, in blue ink. After this is over, I have 25 sheets that, uh, this actually is five, but it's 25 if you use your imagination. Uh, I, I have 25 sheets that have all of those verses printed out, and then also I have sign-up sheets because these verses will give you a much deeper understanding of what of what scripture is saying here so that you can really know where you're at with the Lord and not again just for you but for those people that you care about so we're going to jump into the first of those six questions and the first one is well would would you say that you really are saved by Jesus, and, and most of us would, I, I would guess, who's here. But then there could be some of those doubts, and, and this isn't something that you talk to, to anyone else but the Lord, and you're honest with him. He knows where you're at, but he also wants to help you. The second question is, is the Bible really the authority for your life? And if you have his spirit, he's giving you the hunger and desire to be into that authority. So you can find out more about who our God is and, and who you are. And then what does that relationship look like that you have with our God? And then finally, what is your mission? And that's why his spirit is taking us into that. And you should be sensing that desire in you. And if you say, well, I'm not a great reader, hey, the uh, creator of the universe can, can change that. So don't worry. Uh, so do you believe that the Lord loves you enough to tell you the truth is found in his word? Do you also believe that, as I'd mentioned before, that there is a devil who will attempt to deceive you and those that you care about? And, and if all of that is true, and I believe it's true, do you think that God would love you enough, enough to try to warn you about that so that you would not be deceived? And, and then finally, are you experiencing God's process of victory? And, and this is where the Holy Spirit is in process of transforming you to become more and more like Jesus. So if Jesus is your Savior, 
we're looking at what he's taking us from. And the first verse there is, the Bible says, and, and I'm going to be saying this for those who are watching this ISI broadcast, in Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 through 14, it says, For he, for God, has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness, from Satan's kingdom, and he's brought us into the kingdom of his son. And he's transferred us there, and he's purchased our freedom. Well, freedom from what? Well, you'll see in the notes there, freedom from slavery to sin. Now, that doesn't mean we don't sin. We're just no longer a slave to sin. And, and we could even, at times, have the Spirit, but not yet realize what he's there for. And that's part of why I'm here today is to help you to understand that along with these other verses that are available to you. So going on to the next passage, and that's the second of six verses that says, don't fool yourself. This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. It's, it says, don't fool yourself. And in other translations say, do not be deceived. And it mentions all of these different lifestyles that people are in where they are practicing this sin. Not just doing it every once in a while, but practicing it. They're addicted to this sin. Now, the thing is, can, can we have some things where we just think, oh, man, help me, Lord, help me. And, and after a while, we, we, can, we can start to get discouraged. But as we trust the Holy Spirit, and one of the great things about ISI is the programs that are here to help you that the Holy Spirit can use in your life to help you work through some of these things. But as you see, committing adultery, practicing homosexuality, being a thief, greedy, drunkards, abusive, and it says none of these, if you continue in this lifestyle, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. And it's not that you can't have it for a while, but the Holy Spirit will eventually get you out of that in the process of victory so that you see God's victory in your life. Yeah, when I was in India, hallelujah! You know, they, they really go for it there. Uh, now, it says that uh, some of you... And, and they have to, well, I'm not going to go there. Okay, Shh, none of that. Uh, some of you were, were once like that with these lifestyles. And some of the other passages that are, are these support verses say, all of us were like this at one point. All of us were working through different, different sins like this until the Holy Spirit came into our life and started working with us. Okay, now we're going to look at from what Jesus takes us from to what Jesus takes us to. And the Bible says, and this is the third verse in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 9, for God saved us and called us to a holy life, but not just to a holy life, but to live a holy life. And, and the Holy Spirit is called the Holy Spirit because he's the one who helps us to live a holy life. He empowers us to do that. He gives us the desire and the hunger to do that. Are you seeing that in your life? Well, and this was always God's plan for his people, and this is how he shows his grace. Well, how does God do that? How does he work through that? Well, what I'm going to share with you next is the passage that Jesus was referring to when he was talking to Nicodemus about being born again. And, and he was asking Nicodemus, how come you don't know about this? Well, he should have because it's in Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 25 through 27. And this is God speaking through uh, an, uh, uh, Ezekiel here. God says, I'm going to sprinkle water on you and you're going to be clean. And this is what Jesus calls being born 
of water. It's a metaphor of how God is going to cleanse us so we can receive his spirit. And then it says, I'm going to wash away that sin so you're no longer going to be worshiping idols. And, and an idol is anything that to you is more important and more authority in your life than God. And, and then I'm going to give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. And this is what Jesus called being born of the spirit. And he says, I will take away that stony heart and give you a responsive heart. A responsive heart that is responding to the spirit of God that is in you. And, and then it continues with this. And he says, I'm going to put my spirit in you. And, and I had to ask myself at times through the years, am I really seeing this in my life, Lord? So that you will follow my decrees and, and be careful to obey my regulations or rules. And, and how often have we heard, and in virtually every church that I've been in, I've heard people say, well, Christianity isn't a bunch of rules. Well, that's true. It isn't. A bunch of rules but it has a bunch of rules it isn't a bunch of rules but it has when when you're a citizen of this country there's a bunch of rules that you're expected to follow in all kinds of things and when you're saved into Jesus kingdom and he's the king of that kingdom he has rules for those who live in his kingdom and those rules are called commands and he will help us to follow those. His spirit will help us to follow those. And one of the ways he does that is he gets us into his word. Are you seeing that in your life, that hunger for the word? And, and finally, uh, we see what he saved us for. What has he saved us for? Well, there's two, two uh, key verses left. Uh, the first one is in 2 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 14 through 15. And that says that since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we've died to our old life. We've died to a life of living for ourselves. We've died to a life, and remember again, this is a process. We've died to living for our agenda. Now we're living for the Lord, and we're living for his agenda. We're not living for our sin and, or our porn or other things, but we are living for the Lord Jesus Christ. And then as we get into this last verse here in 2 Corinthians uh, 5, 17 through 20, it says, that means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person that you're now a new person the old is gone remember it's a process you're seeing it progressively being less of you and more of Jesus and a new life has begun and and then it goes on to say and God has given us this task of reconciling people to him that means that that we're helping them to have a biblically right relationship with God well what does that look like well one of the reasons I gave you this sheet and those other 25 verses that will be available to you is so you can better understand what that means and so you don't have to say, well, I just don't know what it is. You know, that's not going to work when you stand before the Lord. So that's why, uh, that's why I wanted to make sure that you had this this morning. So God is in us and he's given us this task of reconciling people to him. And the wonderful message, as it says, of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. Are you Christ's ambassadors? Are you representing him and his kingdom to different people? Well, when you see the Holy Spirit working in you, he's giving you that desire and showing you in his word what to do. So when you care, you share. And you need to ask yourself, do I really care? Do I really care about my Lord Jesus Christ that I say that I care about enough to share his truth with people? Do I really care 
about the people I say that I care about to make sure, not assume, but to make, but to make sure that they really do know the Lord. Because when we care, we share. And we never know how long those people are going to be around, and we never know how long we are going to be around. So I just wanted to say that after the question time, uh, I'm, I'm going to be out by the coffee bar. I'll have those other verses. And one of the things that I'm going to be doing is not just handing those out, but if you have more questions on this, and I know if I was you and if I was sitting out there, I'd sure have more questions. I'm available for appointments. And by the way, you don't have to buy the coffee if we get together, just so you know. Um, uh, but if you want to, you can. Uh, so to, to sit down and, and go through some of this, along with those 25 other verses with you, plus help you to know how to share this with somebody else tactfully and with love. And guys, the reason I'm here today is because when, when Jesus was saying not everyone that calls him their Lord really knows him, I don't want anyone here today or those that you care about to be that guy, to be that gal. So guys, thank you. And I have been praying for you this week, and I appreciate those who've been praying for me. And um, hopefully you enjoy the questions as you get into those. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. John Zweigert. Uh, I'm just going to close in prayer. Lord, we lift up um, all of the ministries of Iron Sharpens Iron and all the men who throughout the week are praying for others, lifting others up, are volunteers in leading different ministries. Um, we're thankful for John's talk. We pray that the Holy Spirit um, miraculously takes that message to your heart if you need to hear that and uh, take another step forward on your spiritual journey. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Right. So, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. I've got a microphone here. I'm going to take full advantage of it for the next 30 seconds. You know, we, we have many speakers here typically where we're building men up, and we're, we're doing things to encourage men and support men, but we don't often hit the nail right on the head and talk about do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? Jesus and God wants to have a relationship with us. It's not about a church. So um, we don't want to just assume, and John's, what John's heart was, he wants to make sure you all have that personal relationship with Jesus. So if you don't have that, if you haven't made that step of commitment, if you have a doubt, uh, you, can, you can end that doubt today. Talk to John, myself, anyone with, a, with one of these little lanyards on would be great. Uh, we, are, we have an exciting part of the program now this morning. We've got about 30 minutes to go through these questions. We break into small groups. There's a large group way in the back. There's a group of men who are, who are dealing with or have dealt with alcohol issues. There's a group on the right of first responders and uh, military people, vets. And uh, we want to make sure there's someone with a red tag in every group to lead discussion to make sure we all get a chance to talk and uh, not bring up divisive topics but kind of keep us on point, okay? Let's make it a great day, guys.